Hi, I'm Tom at Ledgemere and welcome to Farm All Friday. Today I've got two tractors to winterize. I've got the Cub on the end and the 200 here on this end. I'm going to take the Cub out first because I need to kind of get that one uh, done before I play uh, musical chairs with these two. As you can see, I put them nose to tail for the winter. The Super C is all ready, so what I'm going to do is take the Super C out. Take the 200 out, put the Super C in first, and bring the 200 over it and service that, and then put it back in. So what we're going to do today is take these two tractors, uh, make sure they're good for winter storage, and I'll go over that with you. In addition, the Cub has a 22 mower on it that we're going to prepare for winter storage. While we're doing the other things, the first thing we'll do is access the battery. This is a, a 78 Cub, so it's got a 12 volt battery. And as a general rule, the Cubs produced after 1964 are 12 volt, although they may have been modified. A couple things to be wary of uh, while you're putting jumper cables on for the winter. Uh, number one, make sure your, your charger's off while you're putting cables on. Number two, Make sure that if it's 12 volt, that it's negative ground, so the black goes in the negative. And if it's a six volt, this is your ground. With this cub, it has two black battery cables on it. And to simplify this and make it more idiot proof, what I'm going to do is put some red tape on the positive. I've got this 22 mower on it and the pulley and everything back there is all greased and it loves to sling grease back up at the seat. And I'm told that's a fairly common occurrence. So we got this separated. And now we can put the charger on. is that if you don't have an automatic battery charger, make sure that the selector is on six volts for six volt batteries, obviously, and 12 for 12. And so you got your cables on the right terminals and the charger set up correctly. So we're gonna trickle charge the tractor while we go through the checks. First thing I'm gonna do is check the oil and make sure that that's at the right amount. Some people recommend changing the oil in the fall and that gets rid of all the corrosive additives to the oil or whatever's accumulated. I personally like to do it in the spring because if you've gotten water in the machine over the winter somehow through condensation or whatnot, that oil change will flush that out. Generally, I don't have issues. Uh, keeping the tractor under cover is kind of a prerequisite here. If I don't have a place under cover to keep it, then I don't keep it. Some people will put tarps over them and that has its own set of problems. You can get rodents under it. Uh, also, you can get water trapped between the tarp and the tractor, so it's not really good for the, the finish. Ideally, you want it inside, and so you can't really tell because of the, the way the sun is, uh, but we're right between the, the high and low, and it's, it's good clean oil. I did a full service on this tractor this past spring including the steering box the transaxle hydraulics all of it so everything oil wise is in good shape what i didn't do other than take a glimpse at it was to check in the radiator so what we're going to do is pop the top off that you want to make sure that your tractor's been sitting a while and it's not hot before you pop this off this is actually a pressure cap most of the cubs 
didn't have pressure caps on them. They just uh, were thermo siphon, which means that the tractor heats up the antifreeze or the water and it circulates. So as it heats, it goes through and it cools and it comes back down through the bottom. So it, it circulates. This engine doesn't have a water pump on it, like the 140 and the bigger tractors. Simplicity was where it was at with the Cub. You could have bought this tractor, not this one, but in 1947 when they first came out, you could buy a brand new Cub for $545. Generally speaking with the Farmall Cub, the fluid, the antifreeze will find its own level. Uh, so if you get too much, it'll just kind of boil off or this one has an overflow on the top, so it'll just kind of puke it out the side. And there's no uh, temperature gauge on it. And so it's very important that you, you keep an eye on it. There's two different kinds of antifreeze you can get. I mean, there's many makes of it, but basically the antifreeze will come in either a 50-50 mix that's ready to pour or a straight antifreeze. Some people will say they like this kind better because it's already mixed. Some people say they don't want to buy water. So they buy the straight and then mix it themselves, whichever you choose uh, your decision, but just make sure that you follow the directions and use it appropriately. So you don't want to mix something that's already been mixed. We have mud wasps here and I don't know if that's the cause of this, but this old one's garbage. So we're going to use the new one. I just went and picked up at the hardware store. Thankfully it's only a mile away from me. So we'll try this. There we go. So we're good to minus 43 to minus 45. So we're good. The next item up for bid is we have the five foot mower on here and we're going to pull the knife out. You don't want to store your mower, even if it's in the barn or in the shop with a knife in it, you only have to get it to seize up one time and you will wish you had never done so. So we're going to unhook the mower from the chain here, which is in the, the carrier. And these are what was used primarily on the fast hitch tractors. And that way you can use the fast hitch. Otherwise, every time you pick up and lower your fast hitch, you pick up and lower your, your, your mower. So the fast hitch tractors generally had this adapter plate for the mower to hang. I'm 100% certain that after I release this video, somebody will tell me that they've stored their tractor with the mower in their barn for blah, blah, blah years and never had issues. Lucky. I said it only has to happen once and we'll never do it again. So real quick, what I did is I jacked up the shoe, unhooked it from here, hooked it on here, and now I can raise it with the tractor and lower it. These right here are spring loaded. I usually use a screwdriver to pop it because it hurts your fingers when it doesn't go well. Once that's off, the knife should slide right out. You wanna be careful of it. The teeth obviously are super sharp. This was a brand new knife that I put in last spring. 22 mowers had two different size knives. There was a uh, four and a half foot and a five foot. Just want to be careful getting it out. You can cut your fingers or break anything. And 
the spring we'll have more videos on the Cub 22 mower. There's it's actually a lot entailed to having a sickle bar mower run correctly and a lot of people get frustrated with them. Well the, the problem with the sickle bar mower is it needs to be kept under cover, it needs to be serviced regularly and you need to do everything you need to do to, to keep the knife, the ledger plates, the fingers, everything sharp. You know, the last thing I'm going to do is add some stabilizer to the fuel. I don't leave a lot of fuel in the tractors over the winter. You could disconnect the uh, fuel line from the carburetor, drain the tank. That's good. Uh, I'm not usually too concerned about this much in the tank as long as it's been stabilized. What I always do though is turn the fuel off and then run the tractor dry so the tractor will stall because it ran out of fuel rather than leaving any kind of fuel in the carburetor. Here in Maine, unless you buy aviation fuel or race fuel, the gasoline at the, the pumps has 10 to 15 percent ethanol in it and it doesn't have a long shelf life so therefore we're just going to run the tractor up there shut the bowl off and run it out and then it'll be parked for the winter i would definitely say that in the spring we're going to need to do some battery cable love on this you can see i got some corrosion going on the ground and the positive has tape on it which I'm not a huge fan of, so we'll probably end up putting new, new cables on in the spring. Cubs were so fuel efficient that you could go all day on five gallons of gas back when nobody cared. And that's it. With a cub, when you're out of gas, you're out of gas. There's no hiccuping. It's just, that's it. Done. I'll just put it in gear. And we'll see you in the spring, old friend. give this one a go it's kind of like people ask what motor oil to use you ask 10 people and they give you 10 different answers This one's still six volt, so the ground here, or what would normally be the ground is black, is on the starter, and then the red appears on the ground. We ran it, so we'll let it set cool for a couple minutes. Check the oil in this. This will be due for an oil change in the spring. It's still clean though, full this side, so there's the full mark and it's over here. It says negative 20. I'd say it's okay, but next year we're going to have to flush her out, put some new stuff in there. You really want to put antifreeze coolant and not water because straight water will rust 
and it doesn't have the anti-corrosion properties, obviously, that antifreeze does. So I know some people will put just water, but if you do put just water in it, make sure that you dump it before it freezes. The last thing we're gonna do is set the tire pressure. For some reason, I always get slow leaks in these front tires, even though they're brand new with new tubes and everything. Some people say you need to line these with beeswax. After a while, they get rusty. You can take them off and wire brush them. When I had this mounted, we didn't see anything that was causing holes. It just has a slow leak over time. These front tires have a max pressure of 56 PSI, but if you put a full 56 PSI in there, you're going to have one heck of a bouncy ride. So I usually run about 40-ish, 45 max, because you want, them, you want them just a little bit slack and that'll absorb the bumps. Otherwise, it's just going to be, with the narrow front end tires, you don't get a lot of... You don't want them to be too soft otherwise you'll crack along the bottom and then you've got a real problem but you can see down here there's a little bit of a squat to it and I just find that the ride's better by not going to 56 I go about 45. That doesn't sound good. We've got a something going on back here. Maybe it's coming out of the, the core. I think I got a tool. Let me see if I got a tool to fix that problem. Hold the camera while I'm doing it. But you can see right here on the top. Well, I took the spring core out and I put a little bit of oil around the, the rubber. This will be the last thing I can try and then if not, I'll just park it until spring and worry about it. I took it out and put oil around that gasket. There's a little rubber seal, I guess you'd call it. An O-ring or something on that spring-loaded valve core. So I took that out and put oil on it. And I don't hear it escaping anymore, but we'll come back and probably in the spring it'll be flat. We'll have to do something about it. I guess that's where we're at for today, as far as that goes. I'll let that run for a minute. We'll come back, put that away second, and we'll put the Super C in first.
watching and we'll talk to you next time.